Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurophysician from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. My email is 3klpm at gmail.com. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting and exciting topic the localization of the 7th cranial nerve. The localization of the 7th cranial nerve palsy. Very important topic. So how are we going to localize? The major branches in sequence are the greater superficial petrosal nerve, the nerve to stapedius and the coda tympani after which the nerve continues to facial muscles. So the major branches in sequence are the greater superficial petrosal nerve, the nerve to stapedius and the coda tympani after which the nerve continues to facial muscles. So easy to remember the mnemonic tear, hear, taste and face may help recall the sequence. The mnemonic tear, hear, taste and face may help recall the sequence. But now we shall go into the details. So what happens if there is a nuclear involvement? What happens if there is infrapontine involvement? What happens if the lesion is above geniculate ganglion? And what happens if the lesion is below geniculate ganglion? So now we go, will go sequentially. If the nuclear nucleus per se is involved, if there is a nuclear lesion, there may be fasciculations and other evidence of motor neuron disease and dysfunction is usually bilateral, frequently bilateral. The likely etiologies wherein only the facial nerve nucleus is involved are the motor neuron disease and Mobius syndrome, a congenital anomaly wherein in the first place the facial nucleus is not developed or it could be a neoplasm like pontine glioma. So, when the nucleus gets involved, we can see the fasciculations. So, how can we make out fasciculation by needle EMG? So, if the nucleus is involved, there are usually fasciculations. It can be picked up by EMG and the usual etiologies are the motor neuron disease, Mobius syndrome and neoplasm like pontine glioma. After that, after the nucleus, as the facial nerve comes as the infra intrapontine fibers what are the findings so the findings are plus or minus hyperacusis that is the nerve to stapedius decreased lacrimation facial fasciculations facial myokemia but very important is that the sixth nerve nucleus is very close and therefore there can be ipsilateral sixth nerve or pprf that is the lateral gaze palsy and ipsilateral weakness of the muscles of mastication that is the fifth nerve can get involved and there could be contralateral hemiparesis of arm and leg. So the associated findings if the lesion is in the pons that is after the nucleus is that there could be associated sixth nerve lesion associated fifth nerve lesion. So when there is an associated sixth nerve lesion there will be sixth nerve palsy so lateral rectus palsy or PPRF gets involved there can be lateral gaze palsy or fifth nerve can get involved along with the seventh nerve so muscles of mastication may be involved. So if it is the intrapontine lesion not only seventh nerve but there could be associated sixth nerve involvement and associated fifth nerve involvement. So what are the likely etiologies? Infarction, hemorrhage, neoplasm, syringobulbia, abscess, central pontine myelolysis, tuberculoma, granuloma, trauma, multiple sclerosis and other demyelinating disorders. And how do we pick it up? MRI. MRI delineates the brainstem pathology well, the auditory evoke potentials if the 8th nerve is also involved, EMG blink reflex for the 5th and 7th nerves, facial muscle needle EMG. Right. So to summarize, if there is a nuclear lesion, since the nucleus is affected, there will be fasciculations which can be picked up by needle EMG. The usual causes are motor neuron disease, Mobius syndrome and neoplasm. 
if the uh, lesion is in the intrapontine level, if the intrapontine fibers are involved, along with the seventh nerve, there can be associated sixth nerve and fifth nerve palsy in the form of lateral gaze palsy or uh, uh, lateral rectus palsy or lateral gaze palsy or muscles of mastication may be involved. The lesions are very many like infarctions, hemorrhage uh, or demyelinating disease neoplasm. It can be picked up by MRI and auditory evoke potentials. Now let's see what happens if the lesion is in the cerebellopontine angle or the facial canal at the geniculate ganglion. If the cerebellopontine angle if there is a lesion, obviously the eighth nerve now gets involved. So when the eighth nerve gets involved, there will be tinnitus, deafness, and vertigo because of the eighth nerve involvement. Fifth nerve is also close by. In fact, one of the earliest findings of the cerebellopontine angle tumor is loss of corneal reflex. The corneal reflex mediated by ophthalmic division of the fifth nerve and efferent is the bilateral seventh nerve. So there can be fifth nerve involvement as evidenced by loss of corneal reflex. There could be loss of taste on the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, decreased salivary and lacrimal secretion, hyperacusis if the lesion is proximal to the stapedius muscles and since there is a cerebellopontine angle, the cerebellum and its fibers can get affected so there can be ipsilateral ataxia and nystagmus because of the involvement of the cerebellum or cerebellar connections. The lesion being the neoplasm, especially the acoustic neuroma, cerebellopontine angle tumor, acoustic neuroma, acoustic neuroma or it could be other lesions like cholesteatoma, head trauma, meningeal infiltration or inflammation but most important is the acoustic neuroma. So how do we pick up? We pick up with MRI with IAC views posterior fossa CT myelogram, auditory work potentials, EMG, blink reflex, facial muscle needle, EMG and CSF examination. So to summarize cerebellopontine angle tumor along with the 7th nerve nucleus, there can be involvement of the 8th nerve in the form of tinnitus, deafness and vertigo, 5th nerve in the form of loss of corneal reflex, uh, cerebellar involvement because uh, in the form of ataxia and nystagmus. Now let's see what happens if there is a lesion of the facial nerve at facial canal at the geniculate ganglion. So hyperacusis because of the nerve to the stapedius being affected, there will be loss of taste, decreased hearing, pain in the region of the ear and mastoid, vesicular eruption with the ramsay hunt syndrome, battle sign that is uh, if there is a hematoma around the ear or raccoon sign periorbital uh, edema if there is a basilar skull fracture. So facial canal at the geniculate ganglion, basically they have a feature suggestive of Ramsey Hunt syndrome with vesicular eruptions at the ear. They can have hyperacusis, loss of taste and decreased tearing. The usual causes are Bell's palsy, geniculate herpes, Ramsey Hunt syndrome, gulen syndrome, Petrus bone fracture, neoplasm, diaptus mellitus, sarcoidosis, Lyme disease, HIV. Very important are Bell's palsy, Ramsey Hunt syndrome and gulen syndrome. So if there is a lesion of the facial nerve at facial canal at the geniculate ganglion, Ramsey Hunt syndrome and Bell's palsy, they have to be thought of. Uh, diagnosis, MRI, gadolinium may show facial nerve entram enhancement, EMG blink reflex, needle EMG, audiogram, acoustic reflex study and CSF examination. So to summarize cerebellopontine angle tumor, there will be seventh nerve manifestation, lesion manifestations along with cerebellar features along with the eighth nerve involvement. If it is the facial nerve involvement, the facial canal at the ge geniculate ganglion, uh, features will be suggested of Bell's palsy, Ramsey Hunt syndrome. Right. Now if, if there is a lesion of facial nerve at, which is distal to the geniculate ganglion but proximal to the origin of the nerve to stapedius. What happens? Since the lesion is proximal to the origin of the nerve to stapedius, nerve to stapedius gets affected. So there will be hyperacusis, loss of taste, decreased salivation, but normal tearing. Since the glands get escaped, the lesion is below that, the tearing will be normal. So there will be hyperacusis, loss of taste, decreased salivation, but normal tearing. So the investigations and the etiology are almost same. Now let's see what happens if the lesion is in the facial canal between the origin of the nerve to stapedius and the origin of the cora tympani. That means now the nerve to stapedius has been spared. So there is no accompanying hyperacusis. 
facial canal distal to the origin of the chorda tympana. So there are no accompanying changes. Isolated weakness limited to the muscles of facial expression with normal taste, normal hearing and normal tearing. Uh, diagnosis, the causes and the investigations are same. Now what happens if the lesion is after the emergence from the stylomastoid foramen? So now only the muscles of facial expression get affected. The tearing, the hyperacusis, searing, taste, all these things get spared and only one particular uh, 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 signs will be seen that is the loss of muscles of facial expression. So after emergence from the style of fasted foramen, so what are the findings? There are no accompanying find findings. The involvement may be partial because of selective involvement of a certain division or certain branches of the parotid plexus with weakness of some but not all the muscles of facial expression but sometimes if the lesion is extensive all the muscles of the facial expression may get affected but with sparing of taste hearing tearing only the muscles get affected the lesion the cause may be parotid tumor or parotid trauma or abscess we can do facial nerve conduction studies, needle electromyography or imaging of the parotid. So if the knee lesion is distal to the geniculate ganglion but proximal to the origin of no to stapedius, hyperacusis will be there, loss of taste, decreased salivation but normal tearing. If it is beyond the nerve to stapedius, there is no accompanying hyperacusis. And if it is at the level of stylomastoid for a man or or beyond it only the muscles of facial expression get affected there is no tearing there is no taste loss there is no hearing loss and only muscles of facial expression are affected so if you go methodically step by step the localization of facial now becomes very very interesting so I have given so many points but the easiest is to remember the first point Always when you approach a person who's got facial nerve palsy, remember the mnemonic tear that is eyes gets affected if it is very proximal, hearing, nerve to stapedius gets affected, there is hyperacusis, taste gets affected, corda tympani and finally the muscles of facial expression. So if you remember the mnemonic tear, hear, taste and face, you can place the lesion exactly. In a precise manner so as you come from the distal to the proximal level there will be additional findings for example if it is distal most only the muscles of facial expression get affected that is only the you can see here if the lesion is very much distal only the muscles of facial expression gets affected if the lesion goes more proximal along with the muscles of facial expression taste also gets affected if you still go more proximal that is proximal to the nerve to uh, stepedius along with the muscles of facial expression being affected, taste being affected, there will be hyperacusis because the nerve mm -hmm. to stepedius gets affected. If you go more proximally, even the lacrimal gland gets affected, there will be tearing. So, so muscles of facial expression get affected beyond the stylomastoid foramen. The taste gets affected if the lesion is proximal to the corda tympani. Hearing or hyperacusis will be there if the nerve to stepedius gets affected. And if you go more proximally, if the lacrimal gland gets affected, there will be tearing also. So you can go in a systematic manner and then place the lesion very well. So very interesting. It is in fact exciting to localize a seventh nerve palsy, but you have to go methodically and systematically. Uh, the other important concepts of neurology I, I've given, I put it in a book called Focus Neurology written by me, Srinivas. It is available all over the world online, including Amazon. If interested, this book could be bought online. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my concepts of uh, facial nerve localization. If you have enjoyed, please share the link. But please like and subscribe my YouTube channel, Dr. Sinwas Medical Concepts, and my page, Dr. Sinwas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.